All right, video two, let's get started. So what I wanna do in this stage is talk about enterprise project types, enterprise project types. What this allows you to do is as an organization, we can think about the different types of projects that we might wanna create. For example, maybe it's a, a new HR project, it's a new IT project, or it's a software development project, it's a new um, onboarding software project, a new CRM project, any kind of projects that you might have. And they might come in different flavors within your organization, whether it's IT projects, financial projects, um, governance projects, compliance projects, regulatory projects. Think about the different types of projects that you can run within your organizations that have similarities between them. What you can have associated with an enterprise project type, and if I click on here, you'll see it better. You can have, I'm gonna come in and click new enterprise project type, various templates associated. So what project managers are gonna do, they're gonna come into Project Online and create a new project. We want them to have templates and a head start on those different types of projects. We want it to be aligned with the policies that we want for that type of projects, approvals, etc. So you can give that project type a name. I'm gonna call it HR projects, right, project. And give it a description. Please use, this will be used for HR related projects. You can start out with project IDs. So you can say, I want to ID my number. So it will start out with a prefix of HR. So every project will be HR0, HR1, HR2, etc. You can do post fix, and minimum digit padding, whatever you like to do. But I'm just going to call it HR and we'll start at 1 as opposed to 0. Create new projects as SharePoint task list. We do not want to do that. Essentially, it's a very lightweight project. Where essentially, it's just a list of tasks in a SharePoint list. It's not what we want. We want enterprise projects. We can create a workflow to associate with this. We're not going to do that at this point. We're just going to have a standalone project. Workflows allow you to have stage gates and approvals and different pages and security around different type. <laughs> In different stages of your project, you might want to see certain information being captured. As you go down through the life cycle of your project, different information is captured about your projects, different approvals need to take place, and things like that. All right? You can use workflow to control that. So we've got a selection of different pages here. These are the out of the box pages, right? So we've got project details, which is high level information. We have project information. I believe that one there contains every single enterprise custom field that you will create. We'll talk more about that later. You have the schedule, which is actually a web page that shows you a graphical representation of your project schedule. Looks just like the one in Microsoft Project Professional, but it is in the web, just like all Microsoft applications these days. We want to see that. Strategic impact, that allows you to score your project against some strategic initiatives within the organization so that we can do some portfolio prioritization down the line to figure out which projects align best with our strategic goals, etc. We'll talk more about that later when we get into portfolio management. I'm going to leave that out for now. We have these two basic ones. Later on, I'm going to show you how to create your own project detail page and add those in. You can make this the default enterprise project type. Therefore, if you create a project starting in Project Professional and you save that project, it will actually save it with the default enterprise project type. Now, I don't like this for my enterprise project types that I'm creating because if I make it the default enterprise project type, I'm unable to associate a scheduled template with that. See if I, uh, and I'll, and I'll show you where that is done down here, project plan template, I call them project schedules or project schedules, depending on where you're located in the world. If I make this the default, you'll notice project plan template goes away. So I don't want that for my HR projects. I'm gonna create a very complex, well not complex, but a very, I guess, sophisticated HR project schedule template that I can leverage down the line. 
for all new HR projects. So I'm going to uncheck that. I just generally leave the enterprise project, which is an out of the box type, as the default that doesn't have a project plan associated with it. So I'm not going to do that. You can associate your project with a department. What the department field does is it allows you to figure out and, and, and kind of hide different projects from different people. Think of it like this. If you have an IT department and an HR department and they run projects in slightly different ways. The HR team capture who's the HR manager going to be for that particular project. How much money is that one going to cost? But the IT department doesn't capture who their HR manager is, obviously, and they don't even want to see any of the HR projects. They want to kind of have a separate look and feel for the IT teams versus the HR, and we want to separate out content, whether that be the projects, fields, and information that we're capturing about those projects, etc. You can leverage the department field to hide that and filter different information from different people in the organization. If you leave it blank, then this enterprise project type will be visible by everybody. If I put in a department, this enterprise project type will only be able to be created by people that have that department associated with their profile. So if we have HR project managers, we would assign them the department HR. They would then for be able to see the HR enterprise project type because that is also associated with the department and any custom fields that we create that are of the HR department we'll see that in here as well so pretty complex don't worry about it when you get started just think of it as this is a way to separate out content and I will create a separate video on departments down the line all right image you can create a little image so you can upload an image someplace and then store it here I generally if I want an image for a particular enterprise project type I will create a little SharePoint library someplace that contains all the images and logos that I want and I can type in the URL here and that will appear in, when I create a new project you will see the little logo associated with it we'll touch on that later it's kind of low priority right now position this type at the end so you can organize in the order in which this project will show up on the new button that we'll get to. Automatic create a site on publish, allow others to allow users to choose or do not create a site. If you want to create a project site to be associated with this project, you can do this here as well. And you can decide whether you want that project site to be created when the first when the project's first created. Allow the user to select whether they want to create a project site. And there'll be a little check mark when they first create that project will say, hey, do you want to create a project site for this? Yes, no. And then there's also a, a checkbox to say, don't show me this again. So they will be able to not create a project for their site. Or as, a, as an organization, if you don't want to use project sites, you can click do not create project sites. We're going to have a whole project, a video on project sites, but essentially for right now, project sites allow you an area within Project Online for collaboration. So it's a separate SharePoint site associated with each project. It has dynamic permissions. So if you're a member of that project, you can see the project site, etc. If you're not on that project site, on that project team, you won't be able to see the site. It has uh, documents associated with that site. It has a OneNote associated with the site. You can create SharePoint lists in that project site. Essentially, it is a fully functional area, and it's specific to Project Online. There's some really cool stuff in there that allows you to collaborate as a project team. Do you want to synchronize the permissions to that project site? Yes, we do. So if you create a project site, you will be able to access that project site if you're on the project team. And the way that that works is, once somebody is associated with the project team, let's say you are a project manager and you add someone to your project team so that they're then available to be assigned to the tasks, as soon as that project manager publishes the project, they will be able to access the project site. As soon as they're assigned to a task, they'll be, they will then be able to come into that project site and actually edit documents and things like that. So it's a very nice synchronized permissions. We definitely want to do that. Synchronize the SharePoint tasks list. Within each project site, you're going to see a 
uh, a list called tasks. That's actually synchronized with the project schedule and it is a simplified version of the project schedule that you will be able to see in kind of a form of a SharePoint task list. But it's dynamic and it's uh, updated via the project schedule. You might want to see that. So I always just check that. It does slow down performance a little bit, but we're in the cloud, so who cares? We have the power. Project plan template, as I mentioned earlier, in here, you can come in and say, uh, I want to have a project schedule template associated with this type. So whenever I create the project, it will have that project schedule template. We'll come back to that once we have a project schedule in place, a project schedule template in place and we'll associate this with our HR project type. Site template. Um, so this is when we create a new project site. If I click automatically create or allow users to choose, I can then come in and specify a template for my project site template. Right now, there's only one. It's the default out of the box one. We'll stick with that for now. We'll come back later in later on once we've got our schedule template. Once we've got our project site template ready to go, we will then come back and associate that with the enterprise project type. All right, so that is enterprise project types. They're kind of a, think of them as a, a shell that allows you to collect elements of Project Online together so that you can create templates and save people time when they create particular types of projects. I'm going to click save at this point and we will now have our first enterprise project type.